Welcome back to our Rupert Spira book study and Pure Presence uh, book study. It is my honor to see you all again. We'll just sort of ease into this uh, time of joining this another book study, a beautiful uh, expression of Rupert Spira. And thank you all for being here. Please mute your mic if it's not muted uh, already. Shannon, please mute your mic. And uh, we have people that'll catch it, but um, that'll just make it better for all of us. Thank you all for being here. We are, most of us have, I mean, some of us have the book. I was told that uh, that UK would have it by May 18th. And they. I, I don't think they had a very big, batch because they ran out right away and we sent an email out this morning that allowed uh those of you that uh, have kindle or use kindle you can get the uh actually you can get it on kindle but you can also download uh the the chapter one and the introduction to chapter one and i have uh for those of you that are co-hosts i have the co-host list here, but I'm not going to send it out until this week. There are two people I'm waiting to hear from. Everyone that gave me two dates got at least one of their dates uh, filled. And thank you for offering to be co-hosts. And our first co-host for this book study is Jenny Beal. Hi, Jenny, and thank you for being here. Hi, Bill. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see everyone again. It's really, really good to see all of the familiar faces. Hi, everyone. Just look at uh, looking around. If you click on gallery view, you can see uh, our friends are back and then new faces also. And it's my joy to share uh, in this way. The book studies are going on four years now. We've done all of Rupert's books, uh, Francis Lucille's. We've done... Uh, I don't think we did the ease of being for Francis, but maybe that's a future one. We've done John, John Klein, a couple of them. And this title of this book, You Are the Happiness You Seek. Just want to sit with that for just a minute before we get started, because some of you are new. I know that we've invited a lot of new people to this direct path experience. And I just want to say one thing before we get started. You, the you that Rupert's speaking of here, you are the happiness you seek. It's not the person. The you is not the bodysuit, the personal self. The you that we're talking about, that Rupert's pointing to, the you is you. The you you've always been, the you that's always been you prior to the name that looks at itself in the mirror. It, it's not the person, it's consciousness. It's the awareness of all experience. And so that's, if you don't have that understanding, what Rupert calls the great understanding, just ease into this experience and allow the words to sort of become familiar for you. And you are in for the time of your life. It's going to change everything for you. If you just be gentle, just be present, be aware of your experience. Like you're a brand new baby. You don't know anything. You're just aware presence. You're like a sponge that's soaking up content, soaking up uh, the I, your true self identity. And uh, Jenny Beal, thank you for being a co-host this first week. I'm going to ask you to lead the way on, uh, on the introduction. We'll just spend a little bit of time on the introduction, then we'll move to chapter one. Jenny, the mic is yours. Thank you. Okay. Just to say a, a little bit first about the, the book in general, um, I think many of those here attended the previous book club on Being Myself, 
And be, being myself was a set of meditations, and it was really best used in that way to encourage us to sink deeply into being. But I remember Melissa saying that it raised more questions than it answered. And this book answers those questions. And it's much more focused on inquiry, so it engages the mind and helps us to question our current beliefs. So it's really a different way of using this, this book compared with the, uh, the, the previous book. So the, the first chapter is, um, well, there's, there's an introduction, then the first chapter is introductory. And after that, much of the material consists of answers that Rupert gave to people's questions. And there are some questions that just crop up time and time again, we've all asked them. And it's those kinds of questions that uh, form the basis for, for, for this book. And in the introduction, well, Rupert started writing this in March 2020, when the UK and many other countries around the world were going into lockdown because of the COVID pandemic. It had started to expand exponentially in March and found we had to lock down. And for many people, this was a, it was a time of, uh, of fear, of uh, of loss, of lo loss of loved ones, of loss of freedom, and a lot of uncertainty. And in the middle of all of that, he was posing the question, how may one find lasting peace and happiness? And so he felt, well, that's, that's the title of the book, and the book needs to give the answer to that question. Mm. Thank you for that uh, backstory and that introduction, Jenny. That's very helpful. And um, I, I'd forgotten that that he had. Uh, it, it, I mean, if you go to the to the last page of this of chapter one, he sort of speaks to that. That uh, he, he talks about COVID and and it coming in. But uh, he actually did write the two books, "Being Myself" and "You Are the Happiness You Seek" during COVID. Yes. Yeah. So in uh, the introduction called the silent or a silent prayer, he quotes T.S. Eliot. And the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. It's that's beautiful, a great, isn't it? Yeah, that's yes. a really yes. great quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to drink that in a little bit. What what would you like to look at on the introduction, uh, Jenny? Um, I, I I think really I I've said the main thing about the introduction that I I, I wanted to to say, which was really um, that it comes from uh, from that time of uh, of difficulty and it's okay. in those times of uh, difficulties that people are drawn towards a search for um for for peace and happiness and rupert in, in the introduction he he gives um the, an example from his own life which uh, is uh, there's a view who go on to his online meetings and retreats will probably have heard when he was um, uh, learning uh, the the trade of uh, ceramics with, uh, with a master in Cornwall and um, a very uh, rather a bleak place and a very difficult person um, to to work with um, and um, he describes how his his girlfriend was his refuge uh, in a way and um, what happened when she very suddenly um, broke off their relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, I mean, that speaks as an example for, for, for all of us, really, because we all have, uh, we hang our hat on things that we want, desires that we have, or, you know, breakups or anything. And that can be the very thing that causes us to realize, oh, man, I put all my happiness in something it's an object of experience. It's a, it's something in, in a body suit. So it gives a, a good example of, of reflection. Yes. yes. Yeah. 
There's at the top of page two, and for those of you that don't have the book, my apologies. Uh, there's a paragraph that says, uh, that starts out in, in the silent prayer of introduction. He says, Rupert says, what about happiness? He, he gives a little introduction, how poignant and how ironic when, when the world finds itself plunged into the, to a crisis which will bring untold distress and hardship to so many people that this day should be consecrated a day of happiness, well-being, and freedom. Uh, there's an open mic, some, someone. Um, the familiar objects, activities, and relationships that we take for granted are rapidly being removed. This is COVID from us. The freedom to earn a living, to socialize, to travel, a plentiful supply of food and goods in shops, education for our children and grandchildren, and security for our future. That was, I mean, COVID just brought in a whole wave of, of fears, new uh, experiences that most of us never, never saw before. And Rupert at the top of page two says, but what about happiness? Can it be given or withdrawn? If so, by whom or what? What is its cause? Is it something that is taken in from the outside or does it originate within us? Is there such a thing as lasting peace and happiness? Or is this destined to alternate with suffering for the rest of our lives? These questions have troubled the minds of innumerable people for thousands of years and as I ponder them, and this is when he recalls his relationship with his, uh, with his uh, girlfriend and uh, the breakup that changed his life for the better. So anyway, I just thought that was, uh, that was worth reading because, you know, happiness is, 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 we misunderstand what happiness is because we base it on getting things and being happy as a person and satisfied in the moment that we get something or something goes our way. Uh, that's happy. That is what we, we define as happiness. And, and we're off on that. Just like we're off on what love really is, what the word love means. You could say it's the same thing as this happiness. Identical. It's, it's, it's that, that presence of, of, of I am, I am happiness. And, and the knowing of this, this idea, this direct experience, wow, you can't even put words on it, right, Jenny? Yes, yes. I mean, there's no words you can use to, to and this is why self-realization is, um, is misunderstood because it's right here. <laughs> it's right here as awareness yes we, we think of happiness as a uh, as a state of mind but uh, really it's a it's an ever-present uh, state of being um, it's part of what being really is it's it's how we are and same with love and same with truth and same with beauty yeah yeah so we'll pick up questions uh, at uh, the half hour or about uh, 35 minutes in. Let's move to chapter one, the search for happiness. And uh, there's a phone number that's had a hand up. I don't know if you know you have your hand up, so you can put your hand down if you don't have a real question. And we'll pick up questions that are related to the, to the chapter, please, and not, not some uh, off the wall question that you have let's stick to the content what do you see for chapter uh, one the first page well well Rupert starts by explaining that happiness is what we all want uh, above everything else even if we put something else at the top of our list of what we want it's just because we think it's going to make us happy so 
So he concludes on, on page five that what we really long for is not a particular experience for its own sake, but for the peace and happiness that we believe we will derive from it. And he says that the desire for happiness is therefore the driving force in most of our lives. You know what I like about that statement is um, that uh, even though we're off, even though we're our drive for happiness, you know, is is towards objects of experience or the personal self or family or you know the pursuit of 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 getting things. What I like about that statement is that that I'm I'm off, but I'm not totally off. <laughs> I, I, yes. I, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm seeking for happiness. So I'm seeking for me, <laughs> the identity of self realization and, and that experience. Uh, just, I'm just, I'm going to the wrong place for it. Yes. I mean, we, we, we can think of life as just being uh, a long learning experience. And we, we learn as children, we, we experiment with what will make us happy. And we, we try all sorts of things. And we just go on learning and learning and learning from that. And then ultimately, we, we see that there's, there's no object uh, of experience. There's, um, uh, there's nothing phenomenal, nothing in the objective world, which is uh, going to give us the, the happiness we we want. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a, a fella that's in this group that uh, I met about a month ago, and uh, he came uh, uh, over to my house, and we started talking. He, he has he's made a lot of money, lots of money, and he says, you know, I made lots of money, and if and if you're here, you're I'm talking to you. <laughs> he said, but I'm not happy. And a lot of our, my life and his life were sort of parallel, but he said, I'm not happy. And I, I told this, this person, I said, you know, we could have one breakfast together and I'll give you some insight in something that will make you happy for the rest of your life. And you can still have your money. You can keep <laughs> your money. And he was very happy. We did have that breakfast. And uh, I think he's in this book study. He, he uh, said he bought the book. And so you can have the riches of the world, fame, all of these things and not be happy, but you can be happy. And it's so simple. Uh, we're going to walk through it in this. And if this is you, and uh, besides the person I'm talking about, if this is you, just rest in your, this experience will be together for 20 weeks. I, I promise you, if you, if you do desire this happiness for yourself, you will find it if you don't already have it. So uh, thank you, Jenny. What else do you see on, uh, do you see anything on, on page six, if we turn the page? Yes, yeah, so, so on page six, six and um, so he, he starts by explaining that if we look for happiness through some kind of objective experience, we're doomed to fail or already, although any of those may seem to afford moments or periods of happiness, sooner or later they come to an end. The old dissatisfaction resurfaces and the search begins again. And it, it's one way of knowing whether it's real happiness. If it's real happiness, it can't ever disappear. If it's a, a state of mind which comes and goes, then that's not the, the real happiness that we're we're talking about yeah yeah it's um it, it, he says on uh, there's a, even those of us who seek enlightenment on a spiritual path and that's probably most of us here or god on a religious path do so only on account of the peace and happiness we believe we will derive from it. And um, I, I, I love this idea because, you know, uh, I, I was on the religious path. I was on the, I was on the drug path looking for happiness there first, you know, and alcohol and all this silly stuff that young people do in the beginning. 
and then God and religious stuff. And I'm so, I'm so happy. I, I mean, when I, when I found out that you could have all of those things and not have to, not have to um, suffer, not have to have the religious dogma too, that Jesus was actually a real thing that really happened, only not the religious part. That made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He, he says it's often as a last resort that we turn to the search for enlightenment or, or God in our search for happiness. And that the desire for happiness is the highest desire. And as such, it is unique. It's the only thing we seek for its own sake. Yeah. So on page um, seven, did, what did you see on page seven, Jenny? Well, there's um, the, there's a very important um, part of page seven because um, I, I I know that the word happiness doesn't work for everyone, and, and certainly for me, the word truth seems to carry a deeper meaning: truth, openness, and authenticity. And Rupert actually caters for this on on page seven. He says any word inevitably has its limitations, depending upon our particular associations with it, especially in relation to that for which we all long above all else. If the word happiness does not invoke in you that which you love and for which you long above all else, please substitute it with another. And he suggests fulfillment, contentment, peace, love, truth, beauty, joy, salvation, liberation, enlightenment, or, or God. And really those are, are all descriptions of the ultimate reality, your, your true self. If you go to where any of those words is pointing to, to the depths of your being, you find the same non-phenomenal, non-objective experience. So all of those words kind of meet in the the one and only self the one and only being yeah yeah nice and, and it's just it's such a variety of of uh, descriptions that you know pick one that resonates with you you know how if you're if you're a parent or a, uh, or a, a grandparent or a brother sister you know when you or if you have an animal you have your first puppy or kitty or some kind of uh, animal that that feeling that 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 is experienced through the 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 connection of that innocence that's that's the same thing that's happiness that's 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 just it's you it's you though it's you your happiness that's revealing itself through this experience yes for for a lot of people the the word happiness through throughout our lives we've always uh, associated it with something temporary and at a relatively superficial level like the fulfillment of, of a desire but what Rupert is talking about here is at a much deeper level it's it's something that can't come and go and that's that's what we really all want that's what we're really all searching for and he, he says all, um, further down page seven um, he, he explains how in a way it's it's really better described as the ending of any sense of lack he says however we conceive or name the goal of that search its source is always the same namely the desire to bring our current dissatisfaction to an end. Yes. Yeah. When so, we're no when we're no longer seeking, we've brought it to an end. Yes. When we or, no, or it is it, it's, it's come to an end. I, it, I would say. It, it come it comes to comes to an end when we find the real source of it yeah and the, that re the real source is not in a is not in an object and he goes on to argue that happiness is within us not put in from outside 
that, that's really an argument which is aimed at people who are new to this teaching, because as we go further and further in this book also, we discover that reality, that in reality, everything is, is within us. Um, oh, really, there's no inside and no outside. Right. She says mo most people take the view that our inherent happiness or unhappiness would simply be triggered by circumstances depending on the extent to which they conform to our desire or expectation. So he's starting from that standpoint and he's, uh, he, he's saying, well, if that's the standpoint you're taking, um, just, uh, just think that, uh, or just see that really happiness is within you. It doesn't come from outside. Right. I like the, um, because of the Jesus teaching, when, when he taught the kingdom, of he the kingdom of heaven is within, I, I, I love to bring the within to equal awareness. If, if, you're, if you're aware of this experience right now, and, and everyone has to be, you can't have an experience without awareness being aware of it, and that is the within. The, that's where within is found as awareness. So it's not something that's like in, under the skin, behind the heart or connected with the heart. It's the psychological heart, so to speak, but within is simply the awareness of experience. Yes, and the lovely thing about um, that expression, that, that the kingdom of heaven, is that we know that the kingdom of heaven, we feel that the kingdom of heaven is unlimited. And so when we um, say that's the same as awareness, we see that our awareness is not our little, it's not a little awareness that's hidden somewhere right inside us, the size of a walnut or something. It's, it's infinite. And that's a, it's a lovely sort of additional meaning, I think, to, to that expression, the kingdom of heaven is within yeah. us. Yes, yes. And it's nice to, to make the connection as yeah. a direct experience, you know, instead of just a quote, a famous quote, it's, it's really nice to bring it in and, yeah. and, and experience what's being uh, offered. There's a couple of comments uh, Rosalind uh, uses. She said she likes the word contentment, and, uh, I, and I do too. I, I, I like the idea often, you know, when you, when you reflect on, well, I'm content. Well, what does that mean? Well, I don't need anything. <laughs> I'm content. <laughs> this, this, everything is good, and I'm, not, and I'm not looking for something else to... to to make it me better or make the experience be better than what content or what this is. Yes, and ease of yeah. being is similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, ease of, that's uh, uh, Francis's. Uh, no, that, that's book. Sean Klein's book. Um, oh, it's uh, John Eternity Paul, Now was, was, John was Francis. Okay, I, 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 I'm, 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 yeah. <laughs> Rick uh, is for you that don't know Rick West. He's uh, very busy on the chat, and he's also very involved. Beautiful guy. Love you, Rick. Thank you for your comments. And Rick said, "I found it useful to disregard absolutely every idea or concept I possessed about happiness." They're all just ideas, concepts, or pointers at best, but they all fall short. So true. Yes. That, was, that, was, that was perfect. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can always count on Rick for giving his, uh, his uh, some kind of a discourse or some kind of an idea. Pointing, he's a great pointer, too. Uh, he doesn't come on as a co-host, but he definitely is engaged on the chat board. And he hasn't come on as a co-host yet, but he's very capable. <laughs> okay, so yes. let's keep going. And if there's yeah. any questions, if you have a question, you, you can put your hand up and we'll uh, alternate from the chat to the, to the board. 
What else do you see? Yes. So, so on page eight, he, he says, in the absence of understanding the nature of happiness and how it may be found, our culture has conditioned us to believe and even expect that the constant cycle of happiness and unhappiness is normal and unavoidable. And that's, that's true. If you conceptualize happiness and unhappiness to be states of mind, but the happiness we experience in the mind is really just a, a reflection of the, of the real innate happiness of our real self, our true reality. So the mind can change, um, but that real happiness remains. Yeah, that's a real important uh, statement that's being offered here because uh, if, if we think that happiness uh, comes from a state of mind, that, that would be the reason that it comes and goes. <laughs> that would be the reason that uh, people are moody, people are upset by their emotional uh, uh, roller coaster experience because they've, they've placed happiness in the place where it can't be found. Yes. And he, he says in, in this book, I, I will suggest that happiness is the very nature of our being or self, and as such lies in potential within us, accessible by all people and at all times, with the possible exception of those times when the safety and well-being of the body are compromised. Yeah. Yeah, I put a highlight there too. And then in the next uh, paragraph, where it says all that is necessary. So this is a this is a pointer. This is sort of like the the antidote. All that is necessary to access our inherent happiness is to go directly into the depths of our being. So as as we right now, all of us just rest as awareness. Are you aware of this experience? being resting as awareness, we are going directly into the depths of our being as awareness. So it, this isn't something that's just a concept. This is a, a direct experience that each one of us can have right now. Behind the obscuring layers of thoughts, of thought and feeling, this is the great understanding this direct experience that Rupert's speaking of, that, that we're just now saying, okay, I am aware of this experience. That's the depth of my being that everyone should have from an early age. This is the great understanding that everyone should have from an early age. What could be more important in life than to know that we are already that for which we long? You, you are that. Game over. Okay, we're done. <laughs> Everybody got it? Okay, good. Uh, the great understanding. I love that. Where would you like to look on? You want to turn to page nine, Jenny? Yes, yes. Oh, um, uh, excuse me. I, I didn't see Josephine's hand is up. Josephine, would you like to... Um, oh. Uh, unmute your mic and ask a question and we'll just bring you on. Can you I, hear me? Yes. Hi, Josephine. Yes, hi. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Good hi. to see you. On um, page eight, when he, he says there is one exception and that is when the body is compromised, that you cannot access happiness or peace of mind. And yet I have heard Lisa Natoli, for example, speak many times of how she was able to get past all her illnesses and pain and suffering, uh, finding some peace um, by guess uh, having uh, achieved a greater understanding of self. 
And I wonder, I also have heard of others with cancer and many diseases, illness, pain, uh, even in concentration camps, where they are able to find some inner peace, substituting that word for happiness, um, through, I imagine, going inward and drawing upon that, that self-knowledge. So that, that part, I, I didn't quite understand. Yes, I, I actually agree with you, um, uh, Josephine. He does say the, the possible exception. Um, so he's, um, oh. it, it's, it, he's not saying that um, it, it, it's, um, it, it's necessary for us to lose happiness when the safety and well-being of the body are compromised. And certainly it's been my experience when I was in really a, a excruciating pain after I, I broke my upper arm into to five pieces and they they kind of pulled it around without without anesthetic to put it in a plaster thing. Um, and it, I mean, the, the pain was unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Um, but there was still the peace and, uh, and happiness underneath that. It wasn't something that needed to be found or looked for. It just was there. Mm. And sometimes it's extremely uh, a pain uh, in the in the body suit can be extremely uh, uh, debilitating, and uh, in in there the best. I mean, so, sometimes you just need to pause and just be gentle on yourself and and wait. Allow awareness to to uh, to reveal itself. Uh, sometimes you take some good dose of ibuprofen or whatever they're giving you in the temporary uh, experience. Uh, you don't want to, I mean, when I do knee surgeries, I've had two knee replacements. <laughs> I need the drugs, man. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that's the, fir that's the first thing is, uh, is to use the, uh, the, the right drugs. But yes, it, it's, it, it's there, peace, peace and happiness. It cannot it cannot go away. The, the sort that we're talking about, it just can't. There is the pain of loss of a loved one, uh, a, a pain of the heart that sometimes lasts a lifetime, can never go away, that I find might be um, stronger than physical pain. And yet the only exception that he makes is of the body. I, I, I just, I, I would draw other possible examples as well the suffering of loss that will never go away well i don't think yes, we have time way, I, I don't think we have time to cover this kind of conversation mm -hmm. i understand sorry maybe we'll have a special day just to bring up just to talk about those things maybe that we'll just do a bonus day or something for that uh, uh, otherwise we won't be able to make it through the chapter thank you josephine um but but your your questions are very relevant and uh, i love that you that you ask them we'll we'll see if we can find a venue for that um jenny yes yes um page nine let's, let's have a look on on page nine and really what he's saying there is that all the methods that, that we've uh, been given in different traditions, ultimately, they all have the, the purpose of um, bringing us to the latent peace and joy that lies at the heart of all beings. The, this path is the direct path, which means that we go there by the most direct route possible. And that varies from one person to another, but Rupert has different pathways. He uses for, for different people. And then he goes on to tell a story from the Mathnawi about a man going out in search of treasure, but then finding it in his own house when he, uh, when he gets back. And uh, you know, that's, that search is, is natural. It's what we all do in one way uh, or another. And he describes it as the great search for happiness in the realm of objective experience and the return to the treasure of one's own being. 
the out breath and the in breath, the adventure of becoming and the return to being, the unfolding of one's life on the horizontal dimension of time and the periodic plunge into the vertical dimension of being. And uh, that's really important, that, um, that periodic plunge into the vertical dimension of being. He goes on to describe those, those natural moments, the, the gaps between thoughts and perceptions when we automatically, every happens for everyone, automatically slip below the mind into eternity. And this is uh, end of page nine, beginning of page 10. Nature provides numerous such moments the end of seeking upon the fulfillment of a desire, a moment of astonishment, the unbearable grief at the loss of a loved one, the rapture of sexual intimacy, a moment of intense danger, a glance from a friend, the silence of the forest, the peace of deep sleep. Our lives are punctuated by such moments, hairline cracks in the world, which although not discernible on the surface of experience, are portals through which we pass out of time into eternity, only to be eclipsed again by the content of experience. And I think in some ways that's really the most important paragraph in this chapter, because it, it shows you how to find the real happiness of our true nature, sort of uncluttered by the objects uh, of experience in a very in a very natural way mm, yeah in, in sanskrit it's called samadhi and um mm. lo long before i came to the direct path i i came across beautiful description from tripura rahasia which I, people will remember from previous book studies which i often quote because it made such a, a strong impact on me and it says the the wakeful state is iridescent with fleeting samadhi. Fleeting samadhi is indeed being experienced by all, even in their busy moments, but it passes unnoticed by them for want of acquaintance with it. Know that if one can become aware of these broken samadhis, no other samadhi need uh, attract one. And the Tripura Hazia goes on to describe all the same circumstances that, that Rupert actually mentions when this gap in the world tends tends to appear. Mm. Nice. Yeah. And on that, um, that description, that paragraph that you read, uh, it, it includes uh, what uh, Josephine was uh, speaking about, the loss of a loved one, the psychological loss of a loved, loved one. It, we we give it the definition of uh, of sadness. We give it the definition, and grieving is 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 in is included as one of those moments where uh, the moment of uh, of, of uh, the loss of a loved one is is not really. We've given it. Uh, a definition or a filter or an experience based on the, the body mind instead of the 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 experience of love that was experienced yes when it actually happens it 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 takes you into the the silence uh, of yourself and all of those things that he mentions it they, they do that. I mean, uh, Rupert mentions the silence of the forest, and the forest isn't silent. No forest is silent. If even if the birds aren't singing, there's lots of tiny noises. Um, but the silence that he's talking about is the absence of mind, the true silence uh, of ourself, and that's that's what he's that's what he's pointing to. Uh, many, many years ago, I, I used to go scuba diving and every time I sank beneath the, the surface, there would be this deep peace and silence. That's why I love to, to do it. But actually, the, the ocean is incredibly noisy. There's bubbles coming out of your regulator. Boats, even, even sailing boats may make a noise as they, as they go through the, the water. It's very, very noisy, but there's this deep feeling of peace and, and, and silence. 
and that's um, that that's really what he's uh, what he's talking about in mm. in that paragraph yeah yeah and i would say for for people that are new to this uh, understanding or even uh, the the idea of awareness that seems to be f- uh, available or not so available, not so so uh, uh, conscious of of awareness or awareness being itself. I've found that awareness goes deeper and deeper and deeper. It's a gradual and a more expanding it seems to always be expanding itself in my experience yes it's the it's those gaps it's those very natural gaps which initially we might not notice at all um, but then they they sort of lengthen themselves and later on we I- enjoy allowing them to expand to um, can be quite long times. Can be even five minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour, an hour even. Just just sitting in silence, and that's the that's the non kind of non objective meditation that's that's used in the direct path. It's an mm. expansion of those gaps, yeah. and it happens naturally and automatically, more and more and more, um, as we understand more about this teaching. Yeah, yeah, it it changes everything. It, it, it changes everything. It changes your upsets. This morning, I was uh, using a weed eater, weed, weed eating, uh, you know, grass, and I put the thing on wrong, and I put the the thing that cuts the grass on wrong backwards, and I had a moment where I was I was going, damn, and then I thought, wow. I'm just being aware of this experience and awareness is just whatever is happening. It's just happening. It's very content as Rosalind would say, it's very content making a mistake, very content watching Bill, the bodysuit do with the activities that he does. And, and I found that it switched my experience from one of, of a little, you know, pissed off at myself for doing it wrong to just, uh, just experiencing the experience from an, uh, a different paradigm. Yes. It was yes. great. Yeah. So this on page 11, if we, if we shift over to page 11, uh, the, uh, second, the, the second paragraph that starts with, uh, some of us have to go to the brink of despair before recognizing that we are seeking peace and happiness in the wrong place. Can anyone say I to that? (laughs) All hands go up. For others, a relatively mild dose of failure, loss, or sorrow is enough to prompt the intuition that objective experience can never be a source of lasting peace and happiness. Man, you could say that a thousand times and still say it more. And to initiate an investigation into the nature of ourself. Either way, there comes a point in many of our lives, and this is the paradigm shift, when we understand or at least intuit that the peace and happiness for which we long can never be found in an object, substance, activity, circumstance, or relationship. This understanding does not imply that we lose interest in the world or that we no longer engage with objects, activities, and relationships, but simply that we no longer do so for the purpose of finding peace, happiness, and love in them. Yes. And, you you know, that that includes spiritual objects uh, uh, as well. Reading books, watching um, Rupert's videos or other teachers' videos, listening to to teachers, spiritual practices, meditating, all all of those are are activities. So they're all objective experience. They might point you towards your true nature, but that's that's all. They can't in themselves take you there. You you discover what you're you're looking for in, in the gaps between 
the activities, not in the activities themselves. As often people think, oh, I just don't practice enough. Oh, I should be sitting down at least twice a day, maybe three times a day and, uh, and meditating for, for half an hour. And um, this is why I'm still unhappy. And no, that's, that, that's not right. Yeah. Well, and also if one can just uh, be the seer of that movie with your name on it and, 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 and don't log in, just see that the busy body mind self chitty chatter, it has all these conditions on its spiritual seeking. And if we can just be aware of that, just don't judge it. Be aware of it. Oh, okay. Look at that. <laughs> leave it, leave it alone. Uh, don't touch it. Passing cloud. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I like what Rick West said here, because I, this is really an important statement. He said, it's important to realize that this teaching isn't any form of self help. It's not about being a better or happier me. Rather, it's the destruction of the me construct entirely. That's perfect. <laughs> That's so true, <laughs> right? The you, yeah, this bodysuit identity, personal preferences person, it has to go away. And it, it, it doesn't really have to go away. It goes away as one is, uh, is their attention is, is, moved to the true self, the essential to, to beingness, to awareness, which is the same as happiness. And, and then you can have these experiences. They don't have the, they don't have the weight. They don't have the power that they used to have. It, it, it diminishes largely. And, and in fact, uh, amazing things happen from this place of presence even pain, and I'm speaking from experience, even uh, terrible pain has the way of just of diminishing uh, its, its hold on my direct experience. Yes, yes. Yeah. It helps you, it, it helps you to, to not take drugs after a, 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 a serious surgery. It helps you to to let go of the pain medicine faster. And, and I'm speaking from a couple of knee replacements that uh, initially you might need the drugs because you're less like totally been, you've been sawed on. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's, let's move to page. Uh, are you ready to go to page 12? Jenny? Yes. Yeah, yes. Let's, let, let's, let's do that. Okay. So, so, so in this section, he's, um, He's really comparing the COVID pandemic with the belief that peace and happiness are dependent on circumstances. And so both are pandemics uh, affecting a vast proportion of the global population. In the, the, the UK estimate is that 90% of people in the UK have had COVID. I, I'm one of the 10%, luckily. Um, but probably more than 90%, I would imagine, um, have this belief that peace and happiness are dependent on circumstances. So both those things affecting a vast proportion of the global population. And he, he is... He says, just as physical pain is a, sing a signal from the intrinsic intelligence of the body, letting us know that the body requires attention. So suffering is a message from the happiness that lies in the depths of our being. You are looking for me in the wrong place. I'm not caused by anything outside of you. I am the nature of your being. There is no other place to find me. Turn towards me and I will take you into myself. So we need a vaccine, and the, the vaccine is the simple recognition of our true nature. It's the, it's the two essential insights that he lists at the end of this chapter, and which he elaborates on throughout the book. Happiness is the very nature of ourself, and we share our being with everyone and everything. 
Yeah. Nice. I, I like how he put this, uh, he put that, uh, that paragraph in first person. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because, it, it, and it goes, you know, right along with the title. You are the happiness you seek. You are happiness. You are presence. You are awareness. From the last book, you know, we covered being myself. You, consciousness are that which is aware of all experience and he in this next paragraph he says as the sufi mystic bastami bayezid bastami probably messed that up for 30 years i sought god but when i looked carefully i found that in reality god was the seeker and I the sought. Right? Yes. That's is. awesome. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we are seeking happiness, it is in fact our innate happiness that is seeking us. Our, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a flip right there yes our it's our happiness that's seeking us the happiness we seek is the happiness that we are so it's giving us a a, a new filter it's giving us a a new understanding if we didn't already have it it's giving us a new understanding so that when uh information comes in and it gets and it's seen, it comes in through a different filter now. Yes, and when we are experiencing suffering, then if we see it as a pull uh, from happiness, pull from happiness that is our true nature, rather than something that something bad that shouldn't be happening and we need to resist, uh, we just say thank you that's a that's a pull from my from my true nature and we look into who it is what it is that is suffering and whether there really is any suffering there yeah yeah but so we asked the question really just to take us back to to what is it that's aware of the experience and yeah, and, yes. and we're back there again Yes. We're back to the self. He's, he gave two insights, Jenny, I, I really like at the, at the very end of this chapter. He, he said uh, at the bottom of page 12, I'm not sure where it is on Kendall, Susan, uh, maybe you, you know, but it says the great understanding that lies at the heart of all main, all the main religious and spiritual traditions consists of two essential insights. Happiness mm -hmm. is the very nature of our self. Uh, come on. Turn, turn, let's, uh, let's mute that mic there, please. Thank you. Sorry. Happiness is the very nature of our self, and we share our being with everyone and everything. That's what you just said. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The second insight will be touched upon towards the end of this book as regards the first in order to liberate this happiness from its hiding place in the depths of our being and bring it out into our lived and felt experience. It is necessary to go to one's essential being or self and recognize its nature. This is why self-knowledge stands as the foundation of all the major religious and spiritual traditions. It is the great understanding that gives us access to the peace and happiness that is our very nature. Nice. Anything else you want to add to this before we go, Jenny? 
I think just uh, one thing we didn't mention on page seven, which is is beautiful, is he says if happiness is what we all love and long for above all else, then the investigation into its nature and cause must be the greatest endeavor on which one could embark. Amen to that. So the caveat to that statement is, do you want it above all else? Because that's the, that's the energy that finds it, I think. Yes. Yeah. It's the intensity of desire, the same intensity of desire that made these bodysuits <laughs> finds itself that it never left. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Will, Josephine, thank you for those good questions and everyone that made comments on the chat. And uh, Jenny has her hand up. I think we'll just, we'll go ahead and, and take Jenny. We'll take your question. We'll extend this just a couple minutes. And if you have to leave, we'll see you next week. If you haven't registered for this, this specific book study, please do that because um, uh, it, it, you'll get the notifications and you'll get the uh, recording replay only if you're re-registered. Uh, Jenny Garden, please unmute your mic and turn on your video. Didn't really mean to put my hand up. I was trying to send a message that this one quote at the end caught me where he says there is either happiness or the veiling of it, but never its absence. Oh, great quote, Jenny. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. And okay. Sarah, we'll take one more uh, question. Do you have uh, a question or a comment? Unmute your mic and turn on your video, please. Hi, Sarah. You need to unmute, Sarah. There you are. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Um, can, Bill and Jenny, can you elaborate on what Rupert meant by 30 years I've been looking for God? I realize God is looking for me. I understand that we are consciousness. If consciousness is not looking for happiness. Is that not correct? Yes. Um, it, it's uh, it's more a poetic description, okay. I, I think that he's uh, that yeah. he's given. But you you do really what I, I was saying towards the end. You do feel this this pull um, from your true nature. After a while, um, you know when, when some kind of suffering or just a bit of agitation uh, uh, arises, you you feel a, a, a pull back into your true nature and I think that's the sort of thing that he's really referring to okay so I'm, I'm reading too literally by trying to think about object <laughs> yeah. and subject correct yeah. yes, yes. Just being okay got it thank you. thank you Sarah thank you everyone for showing up again for this awesome book study we love, love joining thank you. with you thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you.